Welcome to this video where we're going to explore 30 confirmed features of GTA 6 that Rockstar Games has officially talked about. But first, a quick heads up. The info we're sharing comes from a security breach and leak of GTA 6 pre-alpha footage. Rockstar Games acknowledged this leak on their official Twitter. Just to be clear, we won't be showing any gameplay footage due to possible copyright issues, but we'll definitely dive into these cool features. Feature 1. Looks aren't just for show. The reactions of non-playable characters, NPCs in GTA 6, are pretty fascinating. How clean your character is and their overall appearance affect how these in-game characters respond to you. It adds a cool layer to the game, considering how NPCs react differently based on your character's appearance. Feature 2. Let's rev up the excitement with some serious vehicle action. Imagine cruising through the Everglades in a top-notch hovercraft. That's just one of the personal rides available right from the start. And there's more, like taking the wheel of a bold 1970 Ford Ranchero GT in striking red and black, owned by a character named Jason. Feature 3. Here's another level of immersion. Each character has their own stuff. So, when you're playing as Jason, you can tap into Lucia's stash and vice versa. Say Jason's low on assault rifle bullets. If you're close to Lucia, you can ask her for some. It opens up a bunch of possibilities for teamwork and sharing resources in the game. Feature 4. For all you die-hard GTA fans, there's a new clothing store in town called Arches. It's got a fresh collection to amp up your character style. Feature 5. Let's talk graphics. In GTA 6, the clothes are seriously detailed. Wrinkles, dirt marks, and even sweat. Paying so much attention to clothing details makes the characters look super real, adding a ton of authenticity and making the game more immersive. Feature 6. While exploring the vast game world of GTA 6, you'll see a seamless mix of modern vehicles in urban areas and older ones in rural spots like the Everglades. It gives that cool GTA vibe, whether you're cruising in a flashy city car or taking a nostalgic drive in the countryside. GTA 6 has a bunch of wheels to fit whatever mood you're in. Feature 7. During certain heists, there's a timer showing when the cops will show up. Some think it's a developer thing, but it could mean players need to plan their heists well, syncing with the police response for a perfect score. That'd definitely add an exciting twist. Feature 8. I'm buzzing about this one. GTA 6 will feature a massive aquarium. Yes, you heard that right. Players get to explore an aquarium within the game, adding a cool new element to the gameplay. Feature 9. There's a limit on inventory space. Players can't stockpile an endless number of items. A smart move would involve rummaging through crates and storage spots at the docks, to earn cash and gather valuable stuff, spicing up the gameplay. Feature 10. Here's something cool. In GTA 6, you're not stuck with your character's right side view like in GTA 5. Following Red Dead Redemption's lead, players can freely switch their character's preferred shoulder for a better view. It also changes which hand your character uses for weapons, making gameplay more immersive. Feature 11. GTA 6 adds a touch of reality with a dynamic day-night cycle. Shops don't stay open 24 7 anymore. Some close at night and reopen during the day, making the whole experience more immersive. Immersive. At night, the city changes vibe, less traffic, and a different feel altogether. Feature 12. Adding to the mix are special abilities, somewhat like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. From leaked gameplay, it looks like Jason has a unique skill. He can spot valuable stuff in the surroundings. They light up like hidden treasures, adding a whole new twist to the game. Feature 13. Let's dive into some of the confirmed stuff in GTA 6. It's quite a mix. There are spear guns, bolt-action sniper rifles, and a bunch of golf clubs, wedges, irons, drivers. Also, Players can use a crowbar to open containers and grab valuable stuff. There's more. Smoke grenades, flashbangs, golf balls, and tracker jammers to dodge the cops. Snatching fancy cars might need special tools like the immobilizer bypass. Loads of choices to make gameplay super immersive and fun. Feature 14. Moving on to the awesome in-game places we've seen. There's a bunch. Tennis courts, a huge stadium, and even a museum. All with interactive insides. It's bringing back the exploration vibe we loved in GTA 4, and that's got us hyped for GTA 6. Feature 15. In in a cool scene during a diner robbery, a non-playable character, NPC, was visibly relieved when the cops showed up, saying, Finally, thank heavens. This shows how smart the AI is in GTA 6, and it's a sign of Rockstar's attention to detail. Feature 16. Get ready for a huge and diverse map to roam around. GTA 6 covers the whole shebang of Vice City and its surroundings, offering tons to explore. You've got the bustling city, scenic beachfronts, Everglades-like grass rivers, the charm of Florida Keys, and the quaint Port Gellhorn. Port Gellhorn even gets its own police department, showing different areas with their own rules, kind of like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. So, where's your first stop in GTA 6? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Feature 17. Time for a tour of in 
interiors in GTA 6. There's a bunch of places waiting to be discovered. One cool spot making a comeback is Escobar International Airport, giving us those Vice City vibes. Exploring the airport could unlock a load of side missions, opening up endless possibilities for adventures. Feature 18, tourism's a big deal in GTA 6, making the game world feel alive. You'll stumble upon a clever take on a famous theme park, kinda like Disney World. It's a thrilling spot to dive into, and get this, there's even the International Space Station. Rockstar's really going all out to make GTA 6 an awesome experience. Feature 19. The characters you'll meet in GTA 6 have had some major upgrades. They come in all shapes and sizes, some towering and impressive, others more on the average or smaller side. This variety really brings the in-game city to life, making it feel more realistic. Rockstar's definitely set a high standard in gaming with this, and I can't wait to dive into this amazing world they've created. Feature 20 new gameplay features are here, and one that stands out is using assault rifles while inside a vehicle. It's going to shake up how players handle combat. Feature 21 money in GTA 6 works differently. You don't just magically get more cash in your bank account after robbing a store. Instead, you physically grab the cash from the store counter using a button. It makes the whole experience more real and interactive. Feature 22. Now this is wild. The vehicle customization options in GTA 6 are something else. When you get into a vehicle, hit the left D-pad for the vehicle options menu. You can tweak the seat, fix the steering wheel, and even jazz up the interior. There's talk that this might be limited to developers, but I'm hoping it's for everyone in the final game. Feature 23. There's a ton more to do in GTA 6. The game amps up interaction by letting you handle money, USB drives, weapons, food, and different clothes, giving you more control over the world. Feature 24 hats off to hat customization. In GTA 6, you can style your hat in different ways showing off your fashion taste. It might seem small, but it makes your character really stand out. Feature 25. Here's a neat twist. When you're on the run and hijack a ride, your criminal description changes a bit, leaving out specific car details. This tricks witnesses and stops them from telling the cops about your getaway car. Smart move to stay hidden and adds a tactical side to the game. Feature 26. The big news? GTA 6 is officially scheduled to hit stores. Feature 27. Something fun and quirky. You can actually interact with gumball machines in the game and snag some gumballs. It's a small thing, but it adds a nice touch of reality to the game. Feature 28. Talking about the cops and what's happening in the game world. During gameplay, I saw the police doing traffic stops, DUI tests, and even searching vehicles. Also, the in-game map shows random NPC AI car accidents, and the cops rush in to handle these, making the virtual world feel genuinely chaotic. Feature 29. Time to talk weapons. GTA 6 brings a massive range of guns, from pistols to heavy artillery. With so many options, the action stays intense, making sure your arm armed for any situation. Feature 30 GTA 6 is bringing in an inventory system, like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. Looks like Lucy has got a sports bag hinting at that. Bonus features. Feature 31. Let's take a darker turn, handling bodies in the game. It adds a creepy level of realism. Players can deal with and move bodies, adding a whole different vibe to GTA 6. It'll be interesting to see how this affects the gameplay. Feature 32. NPCs in GTA 6 are shaping up to be super interesting. Rockstar's bringing in the immersive vibes we loved in Red Dead Redemption 2, and the potential potential here is huge. The improvements they've made could take the game to a whole new level. I'm super hyped to see what Rockstar's got up their sleeve. Feature 33 GTA 6 starts off with a bang, small time heists, and the chance to rob small businesses, giving you a thrilling start. Feature 34. You'll get your hands on a bunch of tools to up your crime game in GTA 6. Lockpicks, hacking gadgets, and more are there to help you handle whatever challenges come your way. Having the right tools in your pocket makes the gameplay more lively and exciting. Focusing on virtual navigation in Grand Theft Auto 6. This patent sheds light on the intricacies of in-game traffic, promising a heightened level of realism compared to previous iterations. We'll explore the notable enhancements Rockstar has implemented, creating a more sophisticated system that elevates the gaming experience. By examining various sources, we aim to provide a comprehensive overview of this navigation system, offering insights into what Rockstar has in store for NPC navigation in GTA 6. Let's delve into the details of this intriguing patent. System and method for virtual navigation in a gaming environment. Let's break down this patent for a moment. Essentially, it gives us insight into how non-playable characters operate within the game environment. They explain that NPCs' actions are controlled through artificial intelligence, allowing for real-time decision-making based on preset algorithms. In many systems, this is achieved through nodes and links, where each node contains important data that influences NPC movement. For example, in a game involving vehicles, this data could include factors like vehicle speed, lane width, road type, and number of lanes. Now, these nodes are essentially waypoints that NPCs follow to navigate from one point to another. In simpler sections of the road, 
These nodes might be connected linearly, guiding NPCs straightforwardly. But in more complex areas, like junctions, the nodes become more intricate. Take a basic intersection for instance. A vehicle approaching it would have several exit options, leading to a branching network of nodes. In older systems, like the one used in GTA 5, NPCs might make decisions at these junctions based on simple rules, sometimes leading to behaviors that seem a bit random. However, this conventional method has its limitations, especially when it comes to handling various factors like weather conditions, changing lanes, parking cars, or anticipating road exits. In these situations, the old system could falter, as NPCs might not adapt well to the dynamic environment. One downside of the node-based system is its limited capacity to replicate real-life factors that humans naturally consider. Another drawback is its constraint in automating NPCs effectively. Due to memory and processing limitations, only a set number of NPC-controlled cars can be spawned in the game. Naturally, players crave a more immersive experience with a greater number of NPC-controlled cars on the road. Moreover, in conventional systems, NPCs often repeat the same actions, and some may even disappear as players get closer to them. Additionally, in GTA 5, the system relies on local traffic avoidance for NPCs to steer clear of collisions. This means that NPCs continuously scan their immediate surroundings each frame for any obstacles like vehicles, pedestrians, or objects. Using a front-facing polygon, they gather data about the road layout and calculate the optimal steering angle to dodge obstacles or stay on the road. It's worth noting that this process occurs independently for each frame, without any reference to previous frames. This results in slower detection, as the system may not recognize a road blockage promptly. Instead, it interprets the obstruction as something to be avoided, without distinguishing it as a complete road blockage. Recognizing these limitations, Rockstar has engineered an NPC system that addresses these shortcomings of conventional systems. This advanced system efficiently manages NPC nodes and node graphs, yielding optimal outcomes while circumventing hardware and software constraints. NPCs in this system demonstrate heightened spatial awareness and adaptability, capable of altering routes based on real-time data from the environment. Moreover, this innovative system synergizes with the tagging mechanism discussed in earlier discussions. Through node analysis, the system identifies tags, such as indicating a road leads to a junction unsuitable for large vehicles. Consequently, large vehicles are deterred from entering. Furthermore, NPCs within this system consider various attributes of vehicle types, models, including speed restrictions, acceleration and braking capabilities, top speeds, cornering abilities, and vehicle size. NPCs will consider a plethora of data from their surroundings, leading to heightened situational awareness. Video games are populated by NPCs who are able to make real-time decisions based on their environment. Games use a specific system for NPCs to traverse the game world. However, this system is very limited, and thus the decisions NPCs can make are very limited as well. NPCs in vehicles only consider their close vicinity, but nothing else. Also, to avoid collisions, NPCs only consider the last generated frame and base their reaction on that. No prior frames are considered. Rockstar has invented a new system which aims to fix these issues and make NPCs more intelligent and thus make the game world feel more realistic. NPCs can now consider factors like traffic, as well as account for changing lanes when parking cars, anticipating a road exit, weather conditions, and the like. There are more than a predetermined number of NPC-controlled cars in the game now for a realistic experience for the player. Vehicles can now plan accordingly in case there is any type of road blockage. This also applies to police cars being able to navigate their way through traffic during a chase. I'd like to highlight another breakdown of the patent, which dates back three years ago. Let's delve into it. Take away from yesterday's patent post. I've read over the patent post from yesterday, and I noticed a lot of people missed the most exciting information in it. I'll sum it up in non-technical language. It's essentially a method to improve vehicle AL when driving currently. When NPCs drive on the road, they can sense a few cars around them to determine crashes or other things to drive around. This is dumb AL, as it has very few factors to take into account, and requires a lot of computational resources. This is why vehicles despawn when far away to free up the CPU. Rockstar's patent describes a system that primarily will change this and give NPCs more situational awareness. They will essentially have an objective of navigating from one location to another, simplified, but is essential in making routines similar to RDR2, and be able to take into account other external factors. 
Coolest of all, NPCS will still exist when your game isn't rendering them in this implementation. Specific examples mentioned by Rockstar state they will be able to use weather conditions, traffic, and crashes to determine where to go. Some areas might be dangerous in the rain, they might avoid it. If an area has too much traffic, they will avoid it. Possibly destructible environmental areas could be reacted to. Similar to bridges in Just Cause, this point is speculation, however. Cars will also be able to take into account number of lanes and speed in their decisions. NPCs will be also able to take into account high-speed chases and be able to navigate if they themselves are speeding. There will also be other reactions that are mentioned specifically, such as changing lanes before a highway exit appears, and as Rockstar puts it, driving slower on residential type roads, or having to perform certain maneuvers to avoid oncoming traffic on single lane streets. The large part they also mention is this implementation uses a lot less processing power. The NPC schedules can be relayed by a central server, they could possibly use the console itself as well, and it doesn't require the same constant surrounding analysis. As previous Al Rockstar mentions, this will allow them to have denser traffic with the same resources. A large aim also seems to be realism. Rockstar's patent mentions realistic reactions to various factors as being the main intent. For example, NPCs will each have different driving ability levels, based on the driver and the car. Essentially, each driver will have its own profile, and have unique driving characteristics as well as skill level. Some might speed, others might not. Each vehicle will also affect the driving of these drivers. We'll delve into the upcoming changes to the AI systems in Grand Theft Auto 6 by Rockstar. We'll explore a patent that introduces a groundbreaking system unprecedented in gaming, promising a revolutionary shift in how AI operates within games. Additionally, we'll delve into other intricacies concerning AI and non-playable characters in GTA 6, including insights from a job listing at Rockstar's new LA studio, shedding light on NPC dialogue. We'll also examine NPC behaviors in response to their environment and their integration with social media, enhancing immersion and complexity in player interactions. Let's kick off with Rockstar's innovative AI system set to debut in Grand Theft Auto 6. Described by Rockstar as the most significant and immersive evolution of the series, the emphasis on immersion is evident in their patent filings. We'll focus on one particularly intriguing patent, unveiling a new system poised to revolutionize AI in gaming. Considering Rockstar's commitment to delivering the most immersive experience yet, it's evident that NPCs and AI will play pivotal roles. This patent specifically pertains to animations in GTA 6, aptly named System and Method for Virtual Character Locomotion. Back in 2020, Rockstar Games unveiled an innovative system that will debut in GTA 6. Now the details might sound a bit complex, but essentially, this patent outlines a fresh approach to animating characters and imbuing them with dynamic intelligence. These characters will now possess a kind of virtual brain, allowing them to react to their environment, other NPCs, weather, and even their mood, influencing their animations on the fly. Before this advancement, each character's animation had to be painstakingly recorded in a studio equipped with motion capture technology. This process involved attaching markers to actors' suits and compiling animations into what's called an animation tree. This method was resource-intensive, limiting the variety of animations Rockstar could include in their games. For instance, in GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, each NPC had its own animation tree, containing all their actions. Animation trees essentially stack animations, blending them together seamlessly and transitioning between them based based on player input and in-game conditions. Additionally, motion matching, a feature seen in GTA 5 and RDR 2, automatically selects animations based on player actions and the surrounding environment. This results in fluid and lifelike character movements, such as running while shooting, creating a more immersive experience for players. With GTA 6, Rockstar introduces an innovative system designed to optimize resources and streamline animation data. This approach allows for more content within the game while offering a broader array of animations. It shares similarities with motion matching but diverges in its utilization of a new framework. Rather than relying on conventional animation trees, character animations will be predominantly data-driven, adapting dynamically to environmental cues. These animations will be categorized into distinct motion types, representing unique character styles. Each character will possess a designated motion type, enhancing the depth and realism of their movement. As an illustration, let's consider various states such as tired, injured, and normal, each corresponding to a set of animations. Additionally, every character will possess their own blackboard, a virtual representation of their current state and surroundings. 
This blackboard stores crucial data including the character's condition, location, weather, temperature, and more. Utilizing this information, the game's code dynamically selects appropriate animations or styles for the character, enhancing their responsiveness to the virtual world. For instance, in the Ocean Drive scene from the trailer, we observe a character seated on the sidewalk. As a group of NPCs pass by, he attentively observes them, reacting accordingly to their presence. With this system, the gameplay experience is poised to become even more immersive. It will prioritize environmental data, including the presence of other NPCs and vehicles, alongside factors influencing the character's mood. Consequently, NPCs will exhibit previously unseen levels of reactivity, shifting focus to a noteworthy job listing from Rockstar's recruitment opportunities. Last year, Rockstar opened a new studio in Los Angeles. From what we know, it's purely a new motion capture studio, so they have another one besides the one in New York, mainly to record NPC dialogue probably. This discovery confirms that. I checked Rockstar's careers page just now, and there's a job offer at Rockstar LA for associate writer, pedestrian, and ambient dialogue. This could indicate that they are still writing and recording GTA 6 NPC dialogue right now. This suggests that the development team is currently engaged in scripting and recording NPC dialogue for GTA 6. You can find the specific responsibilities outlined in the job description provided. It says, write funny, character-driven, and unique dialogue for our ambient population. Work with key stakeholders to understand and support the technical requirements for player-led, dialogue-based interactions with our ambient population. Provide exciting dialogue that works within the strict constraints of a complex game system. Undertake self-motivated research and leverage that research to enrich your writing. Understand and match the tone of our games. This underscores the commitment of Rockstar to ensuring that GTA 6 remains true to its franchise roots. Aligning NPC dialogue with the established GTA universe bodes well for the game's authenticity. Shifting gears to another aspect related to NPCs, let's delve into how they'll integrate with social media. Not only will NPCs exhibit more lifelike behaviors and interactions with their surroundings, but they'll also engage with social media platforms, a novel addition to Grand Theft Auto 6. Here's a rundown of the phones observed. NPCs will be equipped with various phone models, as evident from both images and the trailer. Notably, NPCs will actively engage with their phones, which boast fully functional cameras and displays, an improvement over GTA V. For instance, in a scene from the trailer set on Ocean Drive, an NPC can be observed capturing photos or videos with their phone. The displayed imagery accurately reflects the NPC's point of view, suggesting the possibility for NPCs to record and share in-game content on the virtual social media platforms. Let's delve into an intriguing Reddit post that delves into this aspect further. Here's why NPC-recorded TikToks aren't as far-fetched as you think. A common speculation point I see on this subreddit is the potential for NPC-recorded TikToks for the game's social media that was teased in the trailer. Like someone filming you, commit a crime, and you later seeing that post online. Many have dismissed this as far-fetched in terms of development complexity, but I wanted to discuss why it's plausible. Firstly, I think we've already seen a system that could serve as a base for building a TikTok-like system, the Instant Replay, Rockstar Editor from GTA 5. Given this game is more of a sandbox with physics rather than a competitive shooter, where replay systems are typically seen, it's even more impressive to consider this system in GTA 5. It accurately records and replays events just as they happened, with every car, ragdoll, etc. Moving just as it did originally in the moment. The tech behind this isn't actually recording like a camera and replaying, it's really just recreating it, which again makes it impressive how much time Rockstar put into it, making it accurate. To me, this feels like what could be used as a base for a system where NPCs record their own videos from their perspective. This next thing is something I could have sworn I remember hearing long ago, but can't seem to find, and was hoping someone on here remembers too. Back before GTA 5's launch, there were details revealed through various interviews, magazines, etc., and I remember hearing or reading something about being able to watch your own crimes on Weasel News on the TV. This obviously didn't end up in the game, but there is a slight remnant of it in GTA Online. Am I the only one who remembers this being mentioned for single player though? Maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. Anyways, this last point is actually from the trailer. At the 033 mark, in this scene we see a lot of NPCs hanging out on a busy street, and one NPC in particular recording on his phone. As we know Rockstar's trailers are always all in engine, no CGI cinematics, so I think it's worth noting that it looks as if his screen is accurately showing what he's looking at. My screenshot is zoomed in, but if you got hat mark on the trailer, you can see it matches up to what he's looking up at. Could this be a hint towards said system, or just a nice detail? Rockstar has a reputation for delivering what they showcase in their trailers, often exceeding expectations. 
Their dedication to enhancing NPC interactions in GTA 6 underscores their commitment to creating a vibrant and authentic game world. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on these developments. We'll delve into the latest iteration of the GTA 6 mapping endeavor. The developers have expanded and refined the GTA 6 map significantly, making it the most comprehensive fan-made project to date. It incorporates all available data from leaks and the initial official trailer. We'll explore the recent updates to the map and conduct a fascinating comparison between the current GTA 6 map and those of previous GTA games. Additionally, we'll examine a fan-created satellite view of the GTA 6 map, along with the inclusion of Tommy Versetti's mansion spotted in the trailer. All of these elements will be discussed in detail throughout this video. Let's kick things off with the GTA 6 mapping project. Changes have been implemented across all regions of the map. To ensure we cover everything comprehensively, we'll begin our tour from the northwest and work our way down, addressing each modification along the journey. Firstly, the map's dimensions have been expanded from 16,000 by 16,000 to 18,000 by 18,000 to accommodate the newly added land mass. Each square on the map measures 500 x 500 meters. Based on the latest estimations, the map will be larger than before, requiring more space to accommodate all its features. Currently, the northern portion of the map remains unknown, which contributes to its perceived size. Hence, the map extends beyond what's visible on the screen. According to rumors, the GTA 6 map is speculated to encompass three major cities. Presently, we're aware of two. Vice City, the largest city, and Port Gorn, which has undergone further expansion in the latest map update. The third location, Yorktown, is anticipated to be modeled after Tampa. Rumors suggest that it could be the third major city featured on the map. However, at present, there's limited information available about it in the leaks. The only indication we have is a sign displaying New York Tune within Port Gorn. Regarding Port Gorn, details are scarce apart from its name and general location. It's positioned north of Fort Killorn and east of Yorktown. Moving on, we encounter Hank Hill, one of the notable elevations in the game. Despite Florida's predominantly flat terrain, Rockstar has incorporated hills sporadically to diversify the landscape. Adjacent to Hank Hill are the Domed Hills, another series of elevated areas. Notably, the border of a river is highlighted in orange, indicating speculative terrain. Nonetheless, it appears to be situated in the vicinity of Red Hill, a small town positioned near Lake Leonida. The largest body of water, Lake Leonida, sits approximately at the map's midpoint, drawing parallels to Lake Okeechobee in real life. To the north of Lake Leonida lies Fairyland Forest, a wooded area neighboring Fairyland, a playful nod to Disney World. To the east of Lake Leonida, you'll find Ambrosia and Laurel, two additional small towns along with North Beaches. Heading south from Yorktown, we reach Port Gorn, which has undergone expansion westward. The buildings and roads depicted in black and gray correspond to those visible in leaked footage and the trailer. Roads highlighted in red, along with orange borders, remain speculative. However, the port area shows two speculative buildings and a portion of the border that's confirmed. The Bay Area has seen overall enlargement, including modifications to the speculative islands near Port Gorn. Additionally, a newly added section featuring small islands and a confirmed border indicates further expansion. With these developments, Port Gorn's size may rival that of Vice City. It might not match Vice City's scale, but it could rival, if not surpass, GTA 5's Los Santos, which is remarkable, considering it's our second city on the map. Additionally, the confirmed borders of Port Goro have been adjusted based on new evidence. The remaining areas in Port Goro largely remain unchanged. We still have Han Waffles Diner, surrounded by its buildings and structures, along with Port Gorn Motel, Gorn Bluff, the Pawn Shop, Port Gorn Raceway, Port Gorn Airfield, and the United State Prison. Belleville and Iconfina remain situated near Vice City. Now, focusing on Vice City itself, much of it retains its layout from the previous map update. We observed the increasing density of the map, particularly with the stockyard and crossdown area now filled in, along with the hotels in the Vice Beach area. The proximity of the buildings to one another is quite striking. Additionally, the buildings on Pelican Harbor Island remain consistent with the previous update. However, there's been a recent discovery. I'd appreciate your thoughts on this matter in the comments below, as it could potentially be significant if confirmed. According to this viewer, they claim to have identified Tommy Versetti's mansion in the trailer. They're referring to this specific mansion situated on the Middle Island, directly behind the enormous yacht. It bears a striking resemblance to his iconic abode, raising the possibility that it could indeed be the one. However, it's challenging to make a definitive judgment, since it's nighttime in the footage. It could simply resemble it, but it's difficult to confirm. Nevertheless, it would be fantastic if it indeed makes a return in the game. 
The recent update brought significant changes to Vice City, particularly with the Vice City port. This is where the scene featuring the bolt shot from the trailer takes place. Now, we have a clearer understanding of its entire border, with some buildings identified. There are two speculative buildings, along with some confirmed ones. The bridges have been updated, and there have been adjustments to the speculated Raya Way. Furthermore, the FLP Solar Amphitheater has been relocated northward based on new evidence. The Vice City International Airport Metro Station has also undergone updates, aligning with new information from leaks. Notably, the airport now appears more complete, with an additional hangar. These encompass all the changes made to Vice City. Now let's shift our focus to the Grass Rivers, as they've also received updates. The speculative landmass along the west coast has been adjusted to accommodate the map expansion. Notably, the Lake SLW waterway now connects to the Grass Rivers, providing insight into the potential appearance of this swampy region on the map. A scene from the trailer showcased the airbolt, a vehicle likely used for traversing these areas. Hamlet remains in its original position, serving as a parody of Homestead. It's interesting to note the location of the Shaka Shed, situated in the middle of the Grass Rivers, reminiscent of the shacks seen in Lemoyne in Red Dead Redemption 2. This suggests that this area may draw inspiration from its counterpart. Furthermore, I anticipate hunting to be quite intense in this region, given the presence of alligators, snakes, and lizards. The diverse wildlife, particularly at night, is bound to create a thrilling atmosphere. Additionally, changes have been made to the Gator Keys and the surrounding islands, as observed in the trailer. More specifically, there have been additions to speculative locations, such as Bird Key, based on new evidence. Additionally, some speculative areas across the map have been updated. That wraps up the analysis of the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. It'll be intriguing to see how closely it aligns with the actual map. Moreover, let's delve into a fascinating comparison between this latest version and all the other maps in the GTA series. Take a look at this comparison. On the left side, you'll find the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. Above it, there's the map of North Yankton from GTA 5. To the right of the North Yankton map, you'll see the island of Copico from GTA Online. Next to Copico, there's the GTA 5 map. Below that, we have the GTA 4 map. Below the GTA 4 map are the maps of Liberty City and GTA 3. And finally, at the bottom, there's the map of GTA San Andreas. One of the first things I noticed is how compact the GTA 4 map appears compared to others. Despite its small size, it boasted greater density than the GTA V map. Streets were closely packed, and every inch of space was utilized efficiently. Anyone who's played GTA 4 can attest to the unparalleled density of its city, brimming with intricate details. I anticipate a similar level of density and attention to detail in the GTA 6 map. Considering the vastness of the GTA 4 map, despite its modest size, I expect the density in GTA 6 to match, if not surpass, that level. Even though GTA 6 is already approximately twice the size of the GTA 5 map, the addition of intricate details will make it feel even more expansive. Now, let's examine a comparison between the old GTA Vice City map and the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. The old Vice City map has been superimposed onto the new one, allowing for a visual comparison of the two. What caught my attention was the size of the GTA Vice City map, which is quite substantial. However, in GTA 6, improvements are expected across the board. There will be more buildings, positioned closer together, enhancing the overall design and creating a denser environment. I also wanted to discuss a map that's been generating a lot of buzz within the community. Someone utilized images from Google Maps to supplement the mapping project. This method offers a clearer perspective on how the game's environment might appear in terms of scale and layout. While this representation may exaggerate the city's size with an abundance of buildings, it provides insights into the length and layout of highways, which have been overlaid with speculative areas. Additionally, looking at Yorktown, despite the lack of details, its size hints at the potential scale of both Yorktown and Port Gorn. Furthermore, the top portion of the map may resemble the depiction, although details remain uncertain. Considering the vast array of features such as multiple airports, cities, small towns, mountains, hills and swamps, it's evident that GTA 6's map is poised to be the most impressive in the series. If you haven't been following the latest news on GTA 6 over the past year, you might be surprised by how much information has emerged. Here's a comprehensive update on everything we currently know about GTA 6. We have details about a wide array of items and tools featured in GTA 6. These include the auto dialer, binoculars, immobilizer bypass, cutoff tool, painkillers, pool cue, trauma kits, golf driver, food and drink, golf putter, USB drive, golf iron, crowbar, golf wedge, torch, jammer, 
duffel bag for looting, cigarettes, and a loot backpack. Let's discuss the game engine. Developers have made significant enhancements to the Euphoria physics engine, improving ragdoll physics and overall game mechanics compared to GTA 5. Now let's discuss the multiplayer aspect. In a leaked clip from GTA 6, we observed a multiplayer session with a player count. This suggests there were two players present in the lobby out of a maximum capacity of 32 slots. This mirrors the setup seen in Red Dead Online and GTA Online, where the capacity is stated as 32, but practically accommodates 30 players plus two spots reserved for spectators. While hopes for larger lobbies persist, it appears the testing phase involves 30 player lobbies. Leaks also suggest advanced weather systems, including heavy fog, a feature that was less common in GTA 5. Moving on to collectibles, there's mention of Wyman car parts. In a clip featuring Lucia, a developer is seen placing a cardboard box with a circular icon, indicating it as lootable. Debug text on this box identifies it as collectibles car parts and Wyman car parts boxed generic used, suggesting players can collect car parts possibly tied to a character named Wyman who shares a passion for classic cars with Jason. Regarding collectible hats, there's footage of Jason in an apartment where a developer interacts with a hat labeled as an ambient collectible hat. According to debug text, this hints at the inclusion of clothing items as ambient collectibles within the game. Additionally, a comprehensive list of all brands featured in the game is provided. While some brands may be integral to the story, many are included for realism and immersion. The list is displayed on screen for viewers to pause and inspect at their leisure. Similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, the weapon wheel in GTA 6 will be divided into three sections, weapons, equipment, and gear. Notably, players can dual wheel different weapons and access a quick item inventory displayed in the bottom left corner of the screen. While leaked recreations of the weapon wheels provide a glimpse, it's expected that the final version may evolve during the game's development. In a video snippet, an NPC is observed shooting at Jason, triggering a health tip to appear on the left side of the screen when Jason's health decreases. Additionally, the game will feature lighting and skybox systems, similar to those in Red Dead Redemption 2 promising improvements such as volumetric clouds and better lighting effects. Speaking of criminal activities, noteworthy events include the Hank's Waffles heist, where Jason and Lucia pull off a daring robbery. Other clips suggest Jason possesses an ability to perceive through walls. Additionally, there are events focused on searching vehicle trunks, which may yield valuable items or nothing at all. Lastly, delivery and pickup warehouse events are mentioned for Port Gelhorn, though specific details are still unclear. When it comes to accessible buildings, GTA 6 offers a wide range, including the Malibu Club, a pawn shop, Jack of Hearts Club, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments, and laundromats, all enriching the immersive experience. Players will also have the ability to command the other character during a robbery. In leaked footage, a prompt advises players to either check in with Jason or hold for more options, indicating the potential to issue commands to your partner during a heist. This feature aims to streamline gameplay, enabling effective control of both characters simultaneously. Unlocking doors and gates is also demonstrated, as shown in a video featuring Jason in the San For San area. Debug text indicates locked door panels, suggesting the necessity to unlock specific entry points. In addition, a new police system called Time Until Cops Dispatch has been implemented. Now, when you commit a crime, the police won't immediately arrive. Instead, you'll have a brief window to evade capture before law enforcement begins to converge on your location. Security cameras play a role in surveillance, but their function differs from GTA Online. Instead of instant detection, there's a detection meter similar to games like Payday 2 or 3. As the meter fills up, you must break line of sight within a certain time frame to avoid detection. Players also have the ability to restrain NPCs using zip ties, as seen in leaked footage. This feature enhances the realism of robberies, offering greater control over the situation. Additionally, players can loot vehicles, as briefly shown in the Hank's Waffles video. A button prompt to examine SUV suggests the ability to inspect random vehicles and potentially steal valuables from them. A while back, a significant leak revealed a plethora of potential world encounters, random events that occur as you navigate the game world. I've displayed these on your screen, and while I won't go through each one, you'll notice they're quite fascinating. From parking disputes to donut burnouts, protests, and even someone getting a concussion, these events add depth and realism to the world of Vice City. 
It's exciting to imagine strolling through such a dynamic environment where something is always happening. Take a moment to review them if you like. They're quite impressive. Moving forward, the community has endeavored to construct a map of GTA 6 based on coordinates and locations gleaned from leaks. This preliminary map outlines Vice City situated at the bottom right. The top section of the map remains somewhat enigmatic for now. Nonetheless, this initial map looks incredibly promising, and the excitement for exploring its intricacies is palpable. For the setting, we know about three different gangs in Vice City. San For San, a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and the far-right militia. These details create an exciting anticipation for what to expect in GTA 6. Now, let's delve into the variety of confirmed wildlife in the game. Players can expect encounters with snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, wading birds, squirrels, southern leopard frogs, crayfish, lizards, skunk apes, pigeons, opossums, and even whales. While these are the animals confirmed so far, we anticipate discovering more upon the game's release. These are the species we're aware of at present. Fences in GTA 6 are not just physical barriers to jump over or drive through. They are individuals involved in illegal transactions within the game. Acting as middlemen, these characters buy illegal items from players to resell them to others. Now, let's explore the AI witness system and police recognition feature, which are notably significant. In the Hank's Waffles robbery video, beneath the wanted level stars, there's a mention of full description, suggesting that witnesses can provide detailed information about you. This implies that once identified, the police will recognize you. When Lucia enters a police vehicle, there's initially no vehicle description, but this quickly changes to a full vehicle description. This indicates that law enforcement will possess detailed information about your vehicle. Moreover, the text warns that any vehicle seen entering will be noted by the authorities. This suggests that even after losing a wanted level, if spotted again in the same vehicle, the police will pursue and apprehend you. During the robbery scene, Jason attempts to prevent customers with yellow icons above their heads from calling the cops or fleeing. Additionally, a female NPC inside the diner exhibits similar behavior, with her icon flickering as Lucia leaves, turning red when surrounded by cops, and then fleeing upon spotting Lucia. These advanced NPC systems indicate a more sophisticated interaction model. Regarding item sharing, Jason and Lucia appear to be able to share items between them. For instance, in one clip, Jason steals items from containers, keeping some for himself while sharing others. Regarding sound design, it's no surprise that GTA 6 will feature more realistic soundscapes. Weapon sounds are crisper and more authentic, with increased volume for a more immersive experience. The impact of bodies hitting the floor will have a deeper thud, creating a more visceral effect. Police sirens will reverberate off buildings and environmental elements more realistically, while the sound of items will vary depending on the surroundings. For instance, if you're in a shipping container, sounds will echo more, adding depth to the auditory experience. Overall, these sound enhancements aim to emulate real-life scenarios more accurately, contributing to the game's realism. Moving on, we have an extensive list of every confirmed vehicle slated to appear in GTA 6, sourced from both the game files and leaks. I covered these in detail in a previous video, so I won't repeat them here. However, I've provided them on your screen for your reference. If you're interested in exploring the full list yourself, you can find them on page 30 of the document. The game features improved vehicle damage and handling, as seen in clips where crashes result in realistic effects, like splitting front fenders and bending car hoods. Furthermore, car interiors now include a functional GPS and waypoint system, enhancing immersion, especially in first-person driving. Players also have the option to enter a car from the passenger seat, adding a touch of realism to gameplay. These details highlight GTA 6's commitment to intricate design elements, evident in its meticulous attention to detail throughout the game. In addition, several new gameplay mechanics have been revealed. Players will now have the ability to walk while in cover, a long-awaited feature that introduces prone movement for the first time in GTA gameplay. Loot bags will allow for storing additional items, and players can now drop and pick up weapons. A new, under-fire animation has been introduced where characters cover their faces during combat, and players can opt to self-revive after sustaining heavy damage. Other significant mechanics include the ability to switch shoulders while aiming down sights, grappling during hand-to-hand -hand combat, and the introduction of buddy communications and a buddy ping system. This system, likely shared between protagonists Jason and Lucia, remains intriguing, 
with its full functionality yet to be revealed. Additionally, a new cover mode has been introduced, altering the way shooting from car windows is executed. Characters will now fully lean out of windows, enabling full 360-degree shooting. Furthermore, a new ability system has been introduced, potentially exclusive to Jason, allowing for a form of wall perception. Whether Lucia will possess this ability remains uncertain. Players can also interact with a greater variety of objects and NPCs, engaging in actions such as carrying bodies, committing robberies, issuing threats, and conversing during criminal activities. Moreover, the ability to pick up additional items, such as beer bottles and cans, enhances the overall gameplay experience. Let's explore some of the exciting new gameplay systems. Firstly, there's the introduction of money laundering, hinted at during the Hank's Waffles robbery. An icon found near the car wash property featured a washing machine with a dollar sign, suggesting potential opportunities for money laundering. This implies that players may be able to purchase properties with the intent of laundering money, although specific details on mechanics remain undisclosed. Nevertheless, it appears players will once again have the option to acquire certain types of businesses for illicit activities. Additionally, there's a confirmed lineup of weapons, which includes a rocket launcher, assault rifle, baseball bat, polymer pistol, knife, bolt-action sniper rifle, Molotov cocktail, spear gun, which is intriguing, smoke grenade, compact SMG, flashbang, micro SMG, sniper rifle, heavy machine gun, auto rifle, and pump-action shotgun. Moreover, glimpses of Jason in various states, sporting different hair lengths and facial hairstyles, suggest a hair growth system akin to Red Dead Redemption 2. This feature seems highly likely given the game's lineage. In terms of sustenance, players can consume items directly from their inventory. In a scene at a gas station, Jason adds wine, soda, and fruit to his inventory, highlighting the ability to eat and drink on the go, akin to mechanics seen in Red Dead and GTA Online. In GTA 6, you can expect to encounter raccoons rummaging through trash cans and stealing food bags. This is evidenced in the game files, which document three world events. Raccoon climbing out of garbage, raccoon rummaging through trash, and raccoon stealing food. While there are numerous intricate details to explore, we've uncovered a multitude of confirmed locations spread across Vice City and its surrounding areas. Naturally, Vice City serves as the central hub, encompassing neighborhoods such as Edgewater, North by City, Rock Ridge, Little Haiti, Vice Beach, South Beach, Washington Beach, and Key Biscayne. Additionally, there's Port Gellhorn, which appears to be a distinct city akin to Sandy Shores or Polito Bay from previous games. Other notable spots include Yorktown, Ambrosia, Sundown, The Keys, La Pearl, Red Hill, Lake Leonida, Hamlet, Stockyard, Homestead, Grass Rivers, Iken Faka, various underwater locations, and more. Each of these locales is meticulously detailed, with numerous mini-locations nestled within them. It's remarkable how much information we already have about the game's expansive geography. In GTA 6, if your character sustains injuries, health will regenerate slowly over time. To expedite recovery, you can access the weapon wheel and utilize a healing item. Unlike GTA 5, where health only regenerates up to 50% naturally and requires snacks for full recovery, GTA 6 appears to allow for natural regeneration to full health, albeit at a slower rate. While not officially confirmed, it's implied that using a medical item will accelerate this healing process. Regarding open world activities, there are seven confirmed activities thus far. Dice, golf, fishing, races, adventuring, shipments, and delivery van events. A video showcases a delivery van event near the industrial area of Port Gellhorn, featuring active security cameras that add complexity to potential heists. Two distinct event types mentioned in the events list are Pragmatic Cool and Chaotic Romantic. Introducing a new event type called Cop Trap, strategically placed in various locations across the map. The confirmed locations are displayed on your screen, indicating that law enforcement will deploy different tactics to apprehend you. Next, let's explore the array of new features spanning two full pages. Firstly, an enhanced AI system is showcased in a video where enemy AI targets Lucia once she turns around. These adversaries demonstrate improved decision-making, adapting their shooting tactics dynamically based on the situation. Notably, they adjust their positioning relative to nearby objects, aiming to avoid frustrating head-glitching tactics. Additionally, they display more tactical behaviors, such as lowering their profile during reloads and employing lateral strafing while firing. 
NPC behavior has also undergone enhancements, with AI groups no longer wandering individually, but moving in clusters, reminiscent of the dynamics seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. This is evident in a video where Lucia encounters a group of tourists engaged in conversation as they pass by. This enriches pedestrian interactions beyond the independent roaming seen in GTA V, now featuring diverse groups and even couples strolling together, enhancing the game's realism. A new gameplay feature allows players to surrender to the police during a robbery, introducing an intriguing dynamic with consequences yet to be fully revealed. Additionally, players can purchase gumballs from vending machines, potentially serving as a health boost, although specific effects remain speculative. Similar to GTA V, your character's attire will accumulate dirt over time, adding a layer of realism. Hacking will also be a significant element, with Lucia seen carrying various hacking tools, though it's unclear if Jason will have access to these tools as well. Previous leaks suggested Lucia's role as the designated hacker, but further details will emerge in due course. Expect an enhanced car hijacking system in GTA 6. For example, the inclusion of an immobilizer bypass suggests that stealing luxury cars will be more challenging. Additionally, a tool called a Slim Jim will be used to unlock older vehicles, adding complexity to car theft. Moreover, events such as steal car in progress and steal car fail indicate potential complications during vehicle theft. Events like carjacking dash cat and carjacking dash advanced AI suggest further intricacies in vehicle related activities. Finally, the document concludes with approximately 20 pages detailing locations found in leaks that correspond to real world locales in Miami. This inclusion underscores the meticulous efforts put into crafting a rich and immersive game world.